Hey everyone, Spider-Man 1991 here. We are entering the golden age of comic book TV shows. Comic book TV shows. A lot of, and not just superheroes, but a lot of other property, independent properties such as Powers, Walking Dead, iZombie are all being adapted and put on, put on either TV or streaming services such as Netflix and the PlayStation Network. That I decided to make a video with all the season finales that just happened. I decided to make a video where I talk about my top five comic book TV shows of 2015. Uh, before I get started, I just want to point out that I still haven't seen Powers yet or Daredevil, so that's the reason they're not on the list. Just want to point that out. Okay. Number five, Agent Carter. In this in this series that aired during Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s mid-season hiatus, Peggy Carter, we see Peggy Carter is balancing her work life, life at the SSR while also helping Howard Stark with secret mission after Howard's fault is broken into and a lot of his private projects were stolen. <clears throat> this series was very, was really awesome. Um, it definitely fleshed out Peggy Carter's character after the events of Cap the first Captain America movie, which I thought was great. Um, I, Peggy was definitely one of my favorite characters in the first Captain America movie, and it was good we got to see her as an old in her old age during during the uh, during Winter Soldier, but you know, I get, a lot of people are probably curious what what really happened after her, in her life uh, in between first event, first Avenger and Winter Soldier. So luckily they cre so it's good that we had this series. Um, it definitely, like I said, definitely it was great that they fleshed out her character. It showed how it was also good because it showed how how she struggled with you know being how a lot of people considered her just to be Captain America's girlfriend, but really she's the one who's help who's helping Howard Stark. Sit, Track down all his all his stolen weapons that were taken by an organ by some evil organization, possibly Hydra, and also gave us the also the series gave us a great look into the Marvel Cinematic Universe before Shield. Um, one of the things that I enjoyed about that that was the early look at the Black Widow program with with the sleeper agent known as Dot with known as Dottie who helped uh, char character. Uh, okay, I don't know his name, but uh, he was definitely. Definitely felt like a reference to the to the comic book character in Captain America, foe Doctor Faustus, who's a hypnotist. So yeah, this so yeah, this series was great. Um, it was de I also liked how the show definitely recaptured the uh, atmosphere of the night of the 1940s, 50s. I mean that I mean the set design and the costume design did, did an outstanding job on that. So that's why that shows my number five pick. Number four, Agents of Shield season two. Uh, Shield is we pretty much opened up season two with Shield slowly rebuilding while also continuing their hunt for Hydra. Um, during the first, which took place uh, after the events of Winter Soldier during the last couple of episodes from the first season, and <clears throat> that was pretty much what and that pretty much continued throughout the first half of the season. But you know it started to shift, but Shield started to shift gears when we saw the introduction when we got during the mid-season finale where we finally got to see the process of Terra Genesis and that led to the introduction of the Inhumans. Of course the Inhumans weren't the only, and also also to reveal that Sky has or has origins tied into the Inhumans which was very which is very nice and also we saw, and Inhumans weren't the only enemy in the second half we also saw the rise of another shield agent well another agency calling itself the real shield that was being formed but this was definitely uh, di that was much different. It was definitely more, I want to say, democratic because, unlike because unlike Coulson's Shield, this one wasn't really wasn't really known. Um, most of the members, it wasn't there wasn't one leader. It was more of a board that voted on what what to do and stuff, which was the, kind of the opposite since Coulson was pretty much the only one in charge. <sighs> Anyways. I love this season a lot. Um, this was way better than last season because the first season, before before the Hydra reveal, it was definitely I would say it was definitely struggling to, you know, find its place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But then once once the reveal that Hydra was within Shield and they went after all the Hydra agents, that was def that definitely got the ball rolling. Also, I loved how they tackled the Inhumans in this series. Um, it was a great idea using the character Sky, revealing her to be Daisy Johnson. Uh, who in the comics is known as Quake, and she's also the daughter of Mr. Hyde, who again we saw adapted into the MCU. Um, <clears throat> um, also, I'm really also back to the Inhumans. Really glad we got everyone got a taste a taste of what the Inhumans are. I thought that was a good idea, especially since we're not going to be seeing the Inhumans movie until 2019. 
So it's a good idea to get get those guys out there. And also, also it's great that I think Agents of Shield is probably going to be dealing with a little more with Inhumans to help build it up to the movie. So really nice. Um, also, the idea of the opposing shield, I thought that was a good idea too because um, basically the re revelation of Hydra came from the fact that Nick Fury did keep a lot of secrets. That was also a theme during Winter Soldier. And, you know, even though Coulson kind of understood it and was willing to, you know, rebuild S.H.I.E.L.D. on Fury's order with the toolbox, um, it would make sense that there would be some S.H.I.E.L.D. agents that would be, you know, really opposed to that idea after finding out that Fury's secret believing that Fury secrets are probably what led to Hydra taking over S.H.I.E.L.D. So, so I thought that was a good plot device, having another S.H.I.E.L.D. that wasn't really comfortable with Fury's secretive tactics. Um, overall, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. this season was much better than the last one. My third show on the list is Constantine. John Constantine is a demon hunter, amateur amateur exorcist and he's, strugg and he's struggling with his past sins while also trying to continue to protect the innocent from the from supernatural threats and the suppo and the supposed rising darkness in the in the world this was definitely this was definitely a very excellent adaptation of the hellblazer series um, i even remember right before the show aired i read hellblazer volume 1 and as well, and there were a couple of episodes that i remembered were exactly like that were exactly like issues of Hellblazer from the comic, like the same plot and everything. And I was like, wow, this is very well, very well adapted. I, I mean, I, that was one of the things that I enjoyed about it. Also, it was a great opportunity to look at the ma more magical side of the DC universe. Um, there, were, there, were, there was an appearance by Felix Faust, Jim Corrigan, and also uh, the character Zed had a vision of Corrigan becoming the Spectre. So that was pretty cool. And also, we got to see Dr. A reference to Doctor Fate by having his helmet in uh, Constantine's cabin or base of operations, which was really cool to see. Um, unfortunately, though, NBC decided to cancel the series. Yeah, that was not. Good. Yeah, that was definitely a dumb idea. I think one of the reasons that the show was canceled is because ratings, probably for one thing. I think one of the reasons. Because of that, is they scheduled it like Friday night at nine o'clock. Usually, shows that air on Friday nights don't do, have a history of not doing well. So, so you know that. So I would say scheduling played a role to it. Um, the show itself, the content, I loved it. Um, I think a lot of fans enjoyed it too. Um, so you know, so it's unfortunately that NBC decided to cancel it, especially since the series ended on it. The last episode had a cliffhanger, and I hate when shows get canceled on a cliffhanger. All right. Uh, okay, cool, cool. Um, but supposedly Warner Brothers is looking around to see if there are other networks that would air the show. So hopefully, fingers crossed, they're able to save Constantine. Also, I uh, just want to point out that uh, Steve Namel, the star Oliver Queen on Arrow, also tweeted that he would be interested in doing a team up with Constantine next season on Arrow. So there's another so there's another outlet for you. So yeah, let's make that happen. And that brings me to my number two pick, Arrow. In this season, Oliver starts off uh, end ending almost all crime, in, well, not all crime in Starling City, but he's pretty much not used his Arrow identity to be seen in a much more positive light. Everyone's starting to see the Arrow as a hero. Even Detective Lance decides to call off the Vigilante Task Force. And However, all this falls apart when Sarah Lance is killed in the first episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, spoilers, if you haven't seen it. <clears throat> um, anyways, this leads all. This eventually leads Oliver to go going head to head while well, meeting once again with Malcolm Merlin, and eventually this leads to him going head to head with the leader of the League of Assassins, Ra's al Ghul. And unfortunately, though, and unfortunately though, Ra, uh, Oliver's con conflict with Roz doesn't end in just one meeting. It continues for the second half of the season, where Oliver ultimately joins the League as Ra's al Ghul's heir, and. <clears throat> And Raish, and prior to this, though, Raish frames frames the arrow for murder by <clears throat> for murder in order to try to coerce Oliver into becoming his heir. Also, <clears throat> also, new characters popped up in this season, such as Ray Palmer, aka the Atom, and they also had a crossover with the Flash series, which was very nice. Okay, the season did one of the th themes I think uh, that this season had was identity. I mean, first of all, I mean, that's really the big thing. Uh, Oliver, I mean, in the first 
few episodes of the of the season. Oliver is considering is questioning if he can have a double life and which he tries to do when he asks out Felicity, but that ends in disaster as ultimately he gets called a, he has to become the arrow again. And Oliver's kinda of starting to realize that he can't live by two names and Rachel Gould also reminds him of this. And that leads to Oliver uh becoming all Sahim, heir to the demon, but ultimately Oliver uh, towards the end of the season decides to only live by one name and that's Oliver Queen. Also, uh, it's not just Oliver, Oliver's identity, but Laurel as well. After Sarah's killed, Laurel goes into training and takes up, takes up boxing lessons from Ted Grant and decides to become the new Black Canary. And also, Thea be also uh, season finale, spo spoiler here, but uh, after Roy uh, kind of takes the rap for being the arrow and in order to get in order to free, clear Oliver's name uh, <clears throat> Roy fakes his death in prison then goes on the run and he leaves his arsenal equipment to Thea and Thea becomes and in the season finale Thea becomes Speedy or as she prefers Red Arrow you know well Oliver told everyone to call her Speedy but uh, she wants to be called Red Arrow so that so that was not so that's definitely something something there um, over, also uh, I'll uh, during the time when Oliver did first face Ra's al Ghul, he died and he had to come back and it took him a while to recover and come back. And during that time, uh, Team Arrow had to protect the city from Danny Brickwell. And I thought that was a very cool arc because it gave Team Arrow the chance to shine and see how they could handle themselves without Oliver. So yeah, overall, um, Arrow, it's still my favorite, still one of my favorite TV shows. I love, I would say I've enjoyed it since season one. Um, so. So that's why it's my number two pick. Um, there's only one show that is higher, higher on the list. My number one pick, and um, I don't think it should be that much of a surprise. My number one pick is The Flash. After the particle, after a particle accelerator accident puts Barry Allen into a coma for nine months, he wakes up and discovers he has super speed. Barry discovers he's not the only only person who got many human powers from the act, from the particle accelerator accident and decides to use his powers for good and take on the identity uh, as the hero known as the Flash. Now, and also while Barry's fighting bad humans in the present, he's also trying to figure out his mother's murder so that he can clear his father's name in order to <clears throat> in order to get him out of prison. And the second half of the season really focused focused on the reverse Flash, especially when we the mid-season finale showed us that Dr. Harrison Wells, the guy who built the particle accelerator and which gave Barry his powers, is really the reverse flash. And also we learned that and, and we also learned that he isn't even the real Harrison Wells. He's actually Eobard Thawne who lost his power powers at who burnt out his powers after he went back in time to kill Barry Barry as a kid, but then ultimately killed Barry's mom. And since then and since then he took he killed Harrison Wells and took on his identity in order to be in order to help manipulate events that would allow Barry to become the Flash. All right, well, the main reason why I love this show is because of Grant Gustin's portrayal of Barry Allen. I mean, I really do like. I mean, that dude is a very good actor. He is fantastic in all his scenes. He knows how to display the the proper emotion that Barry's feeling feeling in each one. Um, so, I mean, you know, he just has this, and also he has this cool everyman vibe to him that I think a lot of people, when they see him, it's like, oh, I, I mean, just when I see him, I think, oh, man, there's a cool dude I want to hang out with, you know? You know, I I think that's what one of the things that makes Barry Allen so great, too, is just his sort of everyman quality. Well, that, it's something that Barry and Wally have had in the comics, and I think Grant Gustin does a good job of training that on the screen. Um, also, the rest of the cast, uh, Daniel Panabaker as Caitlin Snow, uh, Cisco, Cisco Ramon, Har Harrison Wells, Flash Eobard Thawne, all the other characters, Joe West, Iris West, all of them were brilliant. Um, one of my favorite guest villains, though, on on the show is Wentworth Miller's Captain Cold. That is my favorite. Gotta be honest, other than Reverse Flash, he is my, se he is my other favorite villain. I just love the way he's got this sort of calm, cool attitude. It's like, I'm... Just like whenever he talks, he's like, "I'm bad. I'm no, I'm a criminal. And I just don't care." Like, just the way he's able to portray Captain Cold is brilliant. Um, I really hope we get to see him, more of him and the rest of the Rogues this season, uh, in season two. But also, we're gonna see him in Legends of Tomorrow, so so that's gonna be fun too. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, also, the 
Also, Flash wasn't the only hero featured in in this series, as we also saw second half. We also got to meet Firestorm, which was really cool. Because prior to this, I really I knew who Firestorm was, but I wasn't really that interested. So I did did some reading of some old Firestorm comics, so and that was a fun read. So seeing Firestorm kind of got me interested in the Firestorm comics. So that was that was definitely a great benefit. Um, also, one of the cool aspects of this show is the special effects, because obviously we're dealing with a show full of superpowers, so the special effects need to be awesome, and they are, especially the scenes where Barry's running. I mean, super speed has never looked so cool than it is on The Flash. Even better than, I'm going to say this, super speed on The Flash, way better than Quicksilver in Days of Futures Past. Okay. The main thing, also, uh, spoiler alert here, but the finale was really amazing it was really amazing um in the finale though we finally got to see barry deal with the issue of his mom he finally realizes he can travel back in time uh, he has the reverse flash reverse flash captured and he decides that you know he could use this opportunity to go back in time and first flash says he he can tell him just as long as he can also use the wormhole that's going to be created so he can return to the future and so barry and i kind of knew this from the finale but barry wasn't able to save save his mom but he did say was able to see her during her dying moments and say goodbye to her which i thought was a very beautiful scene and once again showed why grant gustin is an awesome act actor um it was very touching to see barry you know he for years he knew his dad was innocent he wanted to save his mom and even when the opportunity came he knew he really couldn't so he but he made the best of it and he got to tell her that he was he was going to grow up he was going to be okay and that was just a very touching moment in the sh in the show. And also when he got also when Barry returned to the present, he just and the first thing he did was when he returned was punch, punch Professor Zoom's time bubble right right through that. That shot was awesome. Not gonna lie, that was pretty cool. And also we are gonna see the limitation. We are definitely gonna see the effects of what time travel can do, especially the way. Uh, reverse Flash is erased out of existence, and also the wormhole was still active, leading Barry to attempting to run run in the reverse direction in order to see if he could close it, which a lot of people believe is going to lead to a Flashpoint season finale, season premiere. And that is, and I would say that that is highly possible because it does feel like they are going to set up Flash. Uh, well, not Flashpoint exactly, but uh, something very similar where the timeline will be changed because. Uh, also, uh, Sis the character Cisco Ramon in the comics, he's known as the superhero no superhero vibe who has vibration-based powers. And in the New 52, he can apparently uh, affect pe people who get draw their uh, energy from other dimensions. So, and also when Cisco talks to Harris to Reverse Flash about how in alternate timeline he killed him. Uh, Wells reveals that apparently Cisco was affected by the particle accelerator, and if they do set up a new timeline, it is possible that Cisco remembers the original timeline, and he might help Barry, Barry become the Flash again, and like reunite the team and stuff. So that would be very interesting to see. See, and I cannot wait for the next season. Uh, just watching this series reminded me how much I love the Flash as a character, and I cannot wait for the next season cannot wait for the next season. I really, really look forward, forward to it. And those are all my top five comic book TV shows for 2015. Uh, what did you guys think? Do you agree or disagree with my list? What were your favorite TV shows? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, again, thank you for watching. Th thanks for subscribing, whether you're an old subscriber or a new subscriber. I appreciate the support. I'm Spider-Man 991 saying, see you later.